Steve, there's been an incredible variety of teaching uh, methods and applications, and there's so much going on that I don't know about. Uh, what are you What are you seeing on your end from Marion faculty? I think you you hit the nail on the head where you said an incredible variety. Um, the The one thing about this e learning period that has been surprising but not surprising to see is that it forces everybody to to relook at what they're doing, and people have been able to double down on what they're really good at in a new form. So those teachers who were really, really good at um, organizing things have found a new way to be organized in a way that's incredible digitally. Those teachers that are great at connecting with kids have been able to find new ways to connect with kids digitally. And so everyone, for the first couple of weeks, everyone kind of struggled to find their footing. And then once people got comfortable with the tools, they figured out how to be themselves in e-learning with the kids. And it's been really cool to see, for example, um, Kathleen Mesterharm, who's our wonderful you know, AP um, English literature teacher, she just had a literary prom with her kids last week, <laughs> where the project was, they all had to come with a prom date, who was a character from one of the stories they've read this year. And they had to explain why this person was their date and why they were at the prom and all these other things. And it tied in character analysis for these AP literature novels. And a lot of the kids dressed up in their actual prom clothes and then introduced their fictional date. Oh. And what a fun way. And, and if you know Kathleen, she always does that kind of stuff. Interesting, unique ways to get kids to do the literary analysis or do the learning objective, but in a fun and different and engaging way. And so that was really cool to hear about and to see. You know, we have teachers who are super organized, who have their class meticulously planned down to the 10 minutes where their kids are gonna do this, 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 and this, and their kids move through and it all works like clockwork. So for me, that word that you said, variety, that really captures it all. It really depends on who the person is and how they've gotten comfortable in this new digital world. And the kids seemed, I mean, at least on my end, they've been responsive, uh, attendance. There are the usuals, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, attendance has been really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, do the kids seem to be responding to a school day, maintaining a school day? You know, it varies kid to kid. And so we've got almost a thousand kids. And so obviously you're gonna have a lot of different experiences. I would say the vast majority, and this comes from all the kids and parents I've talked to, what we've heard from counselors, administrators, teachers, intervening in situations. But like you said, the vast majority of kids, they're doing just fine. That you know, they were doing what they were doing beforehand. This is new and weird and different and not ideal, but they've adjusted and they're going with it. The kids who are struggling are the kids who struggled beforehand with turning in assignments, with being in class in time, with being present in class. And what we found honestly for many of them is that being home either by themselves or home with their families has made it even more difficult to be structured. That they had the structure of the school day to rely on beforehand where the bell would ring, they would go from one class to another, they would see the teacher, the teacher would say, where is your homework? The teacher would say, take out your book. And a lot of times now those kids are sitting in their room you know, playing video games or sitting in their basement texting on their phone or on Instagram, and it's a lot harder for them to keep focused. So the, the vast, vast majority of kids, I, I'm ballparking it at 85% of kids, have adapted just fine. They're not happy. It's a pain, but they're doing it. There's 10 or 15% of kids out there, though, who already struggled and who are struggling even more. So it's really a tale of two cities with the kids. Good reference. Mm -hmm. um, and how are the seniors? looking, uh, I know mine were, yesterday was a, a mixed pot of emotions, Yeah. Uh, just having the last class. Um, so they're, they're gonna have a virtual graduation and then we don't know what. Yeah, that's the biggest thing I think, and that's where my heart breaks the most is for the seniors because we don't know what, like you said. You know, we're hoping to do the virtual graduation on Monday and then be able to gather in person late summer for a baccalaureate mass and blessing of diplomas, but that's up in the air at the moment. So um, my, my heart breaks for them because they didn't know on, gosh, what was the day? March 12th, Thursday, March 12th, when we said, take your books home, we might have to miss some days next week. They never could have thought that was the end of 
physical in-person school for senior year. So they didn't get to have the last lunch in the leadership center, the last time walking second hall to their classes. And, and when you, you're in school, you know it's coming, so you cherish all those days leading up to the end. And they just, it abruptly ended in March and they haven't seen each other in person since. So it's really been the biggest challenge for them. And our hope is to be able to do as much as we can to let them know that we love them and that they're part of the community and to celebrate them when we're able to. You know, we're talking about the idea of if for whatever reason we can't gather in the summer, then maybe next Christmas break, we have a giant mass and a dinner for the class of 2020. But um, we're gonna work to celebrate them somehow. It's just going to be, have to be different. And I know there are a variety of plans. There's a whole lot of thinking going on for what school might look like in the fall uh, for us, yeah. and we just don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. I've been on uh, a lot of calls with different principals, either locally or nationally for different Dominican schools, Catholic schools, et cetera. And some schools are taking the tact of they're going to plan 12 different ways that it could go, and then that way they'll know. But I, I think we, we are very well equipped to adapt. And I think we just need to wait until maybe June or July and get a sense of which way the wind is blowing before designing out what school might look like. Knowing full well that that might mean rotating days. It might be morning and afternoon sessions for different kids. It might be some classes live streamed with the camera in the back while some kids are at home watching and some kids are in the seats. Um, it could be e-learning certain days. It could be certain classes. You know, the freshmen are with us in person maybe and the seniors are at home for a couple of weeks and then we switch. Um, as scary as that is though, it's also kind of exciting because it gives us the chance in the past when you wanted to change something or try something different, you think, well, oh no, it, it might rattle the, you know, might rock the boat or rattle the ship. And well, now the boat's already been turned upside down. So everything's in play. So yeah. maybe we stumble onto something that works even better than what we were doing, quote unquote, normally. Um, Steve, thanks. Any, any last uh, thoughts or final for today for um, um, what would you what would you tell the kids or what are you telling the kids you know I'm saying thank you and and you know I've, I've had some messages with some of the kids in the last couple of days where I've just said thank you for all that you brought to our community thank you for being flexible thank you so much you know I, I, I don't want kids to think that just because the end of their Marian career was online that they didn't have an impact here there are so many wonderful kids who have done such incredible things in service and in their faith and in the arts and in athletics and academically. You know, we've got kids going to Notre Dame and Harvard and Princeton and going to give a year of service. And my message to them is thank you because you made an impact here at Marion and you impacted all the people, all the staff here as well. So thank you to the class of 2020 and hopefully we can serve you the best that we possibly can. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Gary, for having me.